Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's video I'm sharing a handful of customizations in AutoCAD that you need to know. These are things that professionals use day to day and if you're new or even if you've been using the software for a long time, today is one to stick around and check out. I'm going to customize the workspace to save you time and make things easier in your day to day design. Let's jump right into today's video. All right, so whether you've been using AutoCAD for a week or a decade, these tips and tricks are gonna save you time and they're gonna just make your life easier when working in AutoCAD or Civil 3D. These tips are gonna work in both. And they all revolve around kind of setting up your workspace and user interface to suit your drafting discipline and style uh, as best you can. One of the great things about AutoCAD is how customizable and uh, how many options there are to it. You can change it up depending on the type of work you're doing as well as just your preferences in general. So if your AutoCAD looks like this, which is pretty stock and basic out of the box, uh, this is AutoCAD 2023, but this is gonna work in almost every version. Uh, a few things that I automatically change and turn on right from the start and one of those are the layout and model tabs if you don't have those displayed down here at the bottom you're going to want to turn those on by typing in options and hitting enter you're going to get the options dialog box this is where you can do most customization within the software but especially for the layout and model tabs you're going to want to click on the display tab up here and then check this box here display layout and model tabs Hitting apply is gonna add those down here. And this is gonna make switching between your paper space and model space seamless, as well as you're gonna be able to see all of the tabs as you create more layouts for your drawings, making it easy to switch between them. Along with customizing the bottom here, you can add and remove these quick commands, things like uh, wrist polar tracking, uh, object snapping, uh, this one here is transparency or line thickness. You can turn all of these on and off from below with these quick buttons. If you'd like to add or remove any of these buttons, clicking the three lines in the bottom right allows you to customize this bottom default toolbar. This is great for adding and removing features you don't use. If there's some that you use often, click them to give them the check mark and show them. Things like coordinates is one that I always turn on because working in the civil discipline, I always need to know where I am in the world and use these coordinates. So that's one thing that you're going to want to customize is your bottom bar along with making sure you have your layout and model tabs added. Next up is another option setting. So we're gonna type options again and we're going to turn on file tabs. Now clicking display file tabs on the display tab here and hitting apply is gonna let you see all of the drawings you have open. AutoCAD allows you to have multiple .dwts, dwgs, or dxfs open at a time. Those are all uh, CAD drawing file types. Uh, you can have as many as you want in theory. I wouldn't have too many, but the nice thing with this is you can see which ones you have open along the top. And you can also just simply click one or the other to switch between these drawing files. Each one is saved independently though, so you want to remember to save each drawing. You can use the save all command to save all the ones that are open. Uh, you can also close them by clicking the X. Another neat trick that you've got up at the top here is right clicking on any tab is gonna give you a handful of options, including that save all and close all command. But more importantly, you can open the file location or copy the file path. Both of these commands are super useful and a lot of veterans don't even use these to their full advantage. If you need to quickly find a drawing, especially if you're working in a large company server, if you happen to have it open, right clicking and opening the file location is going to open up the file explorer, showing you exactly where you've got your drawing saved and where that file is. This can be super useful when you're adding and removing or changing up xrefs and you need to open up these folders and open drawings now if we're talking about shortcuts if you didn't know already you can actually drag and drop 
CAD files, simply drag them up to the top bar here and let go, and that's going to open your drawing automatically. That's just a nice quick tip if you didn't already know that one. Now back to customizing our layout and workspace to better suit your work. Uh, another one you're gonna wanna use is toolbars. Now you can see I don't have any toolbars currently displayed or showing in my drawing. Now if you don't know which toolbar you want to use, you can look on the list up here uh, by clicking this little down arrow, showing the menu bar, and clicking on tools and toolbars. Now here you can see all of the different toolbars available in AutoCAD. There are quite a few. You can simply select these and they will turn on and off as you select them. If you'd like to turn on all of the toolbars to see what's available, you can actually do that by typing in uh, dash and then toolbars or toolbar, typing in all and show. Now this is going to turn on every toolbar uh, that comes in the default AutoCAD software. And you can see now they are all around here. Um, if you like this, you can leave these on, or you can kind of remove the ones you don't want. You can place them anywhere you like. So what I typically like to do is have a handful along the top here of things that I use often. Things like layer are helpful. Um, some of these line ones can be, you can create custom toolbars that only include the commands you like. I do tend to do that. I'll have six to 10 common buttons that I like to have clicking up here. Although the majority of the commands I use in AutoCAD, I do memorize and type in at the command line. It tends to be faster to use one hand on your mouse and one on the keyboard and just quickly memorize and type in those commands. You can add those to shortcuts using the alias editor as well. Now, if you wanna learn how to make custom toolbars, and that would be either making a toolbar with just the commands you want or adding custom commands as well, I have a video on that and I'll put a link to that video down below in the description. Now, before we jump into the next tip, if you haven't checked it out already, my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course is available to download right now. It's discounted for viewers such as yourself. In it, I've packed over a decade of my tips, tricks, and workflows with AutoCAD. Things like setting up templates and documents, how to use XREFs properly, setting up layouts and drawings in the fastest way, annotative text, sheet setup, as well as packaging and sending out drawings at the end of your project. Everything from start to finish, this is gonna to touch on a ton of tips and tricks along the way. And again, the link to pick up that course is up above and down below, and it's discounted for viewers such as yourself. Now, once you've got all of your toolbars that you'd like to show on your screen, now, this is just some of them. I've got a ton on my second screen here since I did turn on all of the toolbars. You're gonna wanna clean that up, sort it out, um, or you can simply do the same command, dash toolbar, and choose all and hide them. That's gonna turn them all back off. My screen on this side here is now clear as well. Now you can go and turn on, as I showed before, uh, through the tools drop down up here, toolbars, and then choose AutoCAD and turn on a few that you like. Maybe you like the draw order toolbar. Uh, maybe you like one or two more. There we've got the layers commands one as well. So you can put these along the top as you saw before or you can put them down these sides and customizing the layout. Say you've got four or five toolbars along the top. When you're happy with that, you can use this little gear in the bottom right here and save your current workspace as. This is going to keep this the way you like it. So for me, I'm going to choose to call it Brandon and we're just gonna hit save. And now when you change this workspace or if you start up AutoCAD again, you can simply choose the Brandon or your name or the type of work you're doing. You could set one up for architectural work or civil work and have different commands, different tool palettes, different toolbars for each one. So if we change back to the original, it's gonna set everything back up the way it was. This 
top menu bar is gone, my tool bars are gone. But if I hit that gear and go back to Brandon, it's going to flip it back, it's gonna turn that top menu back on, and it's gonna give me back the tool bars that I set up. This can be super useful, especially if you share a workstation with other users, or if you flip between types of work often. Having multiple workspaces can be a huge time saver. Along the same lines and something else you may want to set up before saving your workspace is a tool palette and in particular a custom tool palette. You can turn on your tool palettes by right clicking up in the ribbon area and choosing a tool palette. This choosing something like all palettes is going to open all of them up. If you don't see it, look to another screen. There's a pretty good chance that your tool palette is over there. And if you still don't see it, you can type in the command tool palettes and that should load up your tool palette somewhere in your workspace. Now, you can see here, there are a ton of default tool palettes, all of which are super helpful depending on the type of work you're using. And tool palettes are basically a quick access to something within the software, whether that is the constraint commands here, annotation for different callouts for your drawings. All of these are built into AutoCAD and clicking them simply allows you to insert that block or piece of text or object directly into your drawing. Now you can see here I've inserted a view title block and this is going to be dynamic. All of this is built into AutoCAD. Now what can be super useful is creating a new tab or a new tool palette so by right clicking over here on the tool palettes and choosing new palette you're going to get a new one so i'm just going to call this custom and hit enter now again you can save these out um, and bring them back up but i tend to make these kind of on the fly depending on my project or the type of work i'm doing and then i'll reuse them as i need them um, a custom tool palette is as easy as dragging and dropping things you don't like in it if you have a default, say, type of text or block that you need to use over and over, it's going to make sense to add it to a custom tool palette. You could make one for electrical blocks like these plugs here. Simply select the object by clicking and holding the left button and then drag and drop it into your tool palette. It's going to list the name of the block by default and now you're going to be able to simply click and insert the block again. This is going to save you a ton of time. This also works for text and lines. So if you have a common line, say an electrical line here, drag and drop, it's going to add the arc type and now it's going to keep all of the layer properties that the source line had. You can also right click on these and rename and customize them. So typical lighting line work. Now you've got this item in your tool palette at the click of a button and you can create these on the fly very quickly. You don't need to remember anything. These are great to help set up standards as well. If you have property lines and building lines, all of these can be added to your uh, tool palettes and then simply clicking on them is going to put them on the right layer with the right properties and come out just the way you want every single time. It also works for types of text as well, titles for rooms, uh, dimensions, notes, all of that you can simply drag and drop into your tool palette to reuse anytime you need them. Now these are just a few of the different things that you can quickly and easily customize in AutoCAD. There are also customizations like setting up custom profiles, more workspaces. You can also customize the look and feel of pretty much everything in AutoCAD, including what comes up on your right click menus. And maybe more importantly, you can change all of the colors and the themes. So by default, I'm I've just typed in options and brought up my options menu. By default, the dark theme isn't always set. I always set up the dark theme. I find it's easier on my eyes, especially working long days staring at AutoCAD. I then go into the colors tab here, and I typically will tweak my background color of my model space as well as my sheet uh, background color to something that is a little bit more pleasing to the eyes. I tend to use these dark grays and to choose these, you simply select the context, so model space, and then you can choose to change up the color of practically anything, including the grid, the cursor, the uh, offset lines, anything you want, you can change that up by simply selecting it 
and then changing the color here. If you'd like a custom color, choose select color. And you can see you can lighten this up by dragging here or choose a new color. I've lightened it up a little bit. If I apply that, my background has now changed slightly. Another thing I like to do is for my layout and sheet background, I tend to like to change it to somewhat of an off white color, somewhat like an old piece of paper. Um, this I find is just a little bit easier on your eyes and it also tends to show things a little bit better. So somewhere like a light gray or brown, just an off white. And you can see in the example here, it darkened it up. I find it's a little less harsh on your eyes and you can also pick out colors like those yellows and light uh, browns and greens, things that are a little bit harder to see sometimes when you're looking at this layout now when it's a little bit dulled it's a little easier to pick up all of the colors without missing anything. Now that's all for my list of must customize things in AutoCAD. Obviously there is a ton more that you can customize, but these are kind of the starting points for every fresh install I get. I tweak at least some of these to kind of suit my needs. Again, you can do this to your heart's content and I'd love to hear in the comments what you like to customize in AutoCAD. Let me know and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out my AutoCAD fundamental and workflows course at that link up above and down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and cheers.